Hello everyone, Soaring Stallion here. This episode's theme is gallery. Today, I want to ask a question. Are harems wrong in anime? But first off, why anime? Well, I love anime. I love anime for its difference. I love it for its ability to subvert taboos and explore issues. I love anime as a platform which really treads the line of what is acceptable, pushing the boundaries of not what not only what the West defines as okay, but Japan itself. And one of those subjects subjects which really pushes that line is polygamy. Now get this, the harem genre is prolific in anime. That's a fact. Almost every fifth manga or anime is some kind of harem which speaks to the vast popularity of the genre. The thing is, these shows, as well as about every romance plot in any media, western, eastern and everywhere you can find hinges on this one question. Who is he or she going to choose? Who is more desirable? Who is more intelligent? Who is more handsome? And this raises the question, why can't the main protagonist just marry all of them to solve this problem? But hold on a second, that's polygamy. It's wrong. What is polygamy? The practice or custom of having more than one wife or husband at the same time. And anime has explored this idea through shows such as Kiss Exis and pretty much every harem at least toys with the idea even though it never ends up happening because polygamy is illegal and people don't want to risk their careers which is completely fair. But the question still remains, why is polygamy so wrong in the first place? Good question, because I did some research into why polygamy as a concept is banned in much of society and what I found is arguments against polygamy fall into these broad categories. Discrimination, resources and health. So let's start. Part 1. Arguments against polygamy. Discrimination. Under the topic of discrimination, we have several other arguments. So the first of which is polygamy is equal to polygyny. So the act of allowing polygamy means polygyny in the vast majority of cases. What is polygyny? It is the case which man has more than one wife. So even in societies which allow one woman to have multiple husbands, you'll see that the men are the ones who marry more than one partner more often. Why? Because it is deemed more socially acceptable for a man to have multiple wives than a woman. Also, most of the time, a woman legally is not allowed to take multiple husbands. Take this excerpt from Wikipedia. Polyandry is illegal in virtually every state in the world. Polyandry, of course, being a woman taking multiple husbands. Okay, so what is wrong with only men being allowed to take multiple wives, you ask? Well, having only men be able to take multiple wives is unfair to women, as it singles them out and disadvantages them for a characteristic which they have no control over. It also leads to societal issues such as less men being married. This is because if only men are allowed to marry multiple women, some men are obviously not going to have wives. A flow-on effect of this is that there are higher rates of crime and violence among unmarried men and as a result in the entire society. The second argument of discrimination is class discrimination. Because poly polygamy 
leads to another form of discrimination, which is when women only marry those who are rich and also usually old. Why? Think of it like this. A prize husband who has both money and fame suddenly has more openings to allow others to take in a part of that wealth and fame. So it would be logical for a few rich and famous men to have many wives. And once this happens, we start to see women as status symbols. A difference between the rich and the poor, which leads to the following problems. Faithfulness and age. Faithfulness. When people are reduced to status symbols, we care less about them. The focus is drawn to the size of the number, not respect, which is the basis of every relationship. Concerns over the strength of the relationship take a backseat just to maintain this facade of being popular. Now age, the argument here is that the competition for status symbols causes men to resort to other means of securing wives, such as underage marriages. However, I'm going to write this argument off because I believe that child marriage is a cultural issue, not caused by competition. Instead, men who are rich see this as a similar option, the same as any other woman of age. It is an idea which society has deemed as okay. And even without polygamy, I believe child marriages would still occur. Resources. Having multiple partners leads to less resources and time and being less faithful to each child and partner. This is because each person only has so many hours in their day. Once you have 30 wives, there's literally no way you can spend any time with them if you are to do so equally. This lack of resources leads to a conflict between wives and partners. How? Well, for example, a classical anime situation when two guys are in love with one girl. They may both like the one girl, but would they like each other? Another question is, would they be okay with their time with their loved one being shared? So the final argument, which is health. If polygamy were to be adopted, there would be less variation in the gene pool, as all the genes would come from one man or one woman. Ergo, the human species as a whole would be less able to adapt to selection pressures, such as disease and harmful recessive disorders would be more likely to occur. And that's all for the arguments against polygamy, a combination of extensive research and some thought on my part to fully flesh out all the arguments against polygamy. And after listing all the arguments against polygamy and harms, it sounds like a pretty bad case for polygamy as a whole. But hold it. This piece of evidence clearly con contradicts your aforementioned statement. Sorry, Phoenix Wright reference. But let me tell you that despite all this evidence to the contrary, I still believe polygamy can work. Why? Well, let's dissect those previous arguments, and I promise I'll make it, I'll try and make it as concise as possible. Part 2. Rebuttal. So let's take a look at, the, at those four arguments. So discrimination, first up. I won't dismiss this argument because it is, because the argument that polygamy is equal to polygamy because it's a fact. This doesn't have to be the case though, because I don't believe that women don't want to have multiple husbands. It's just that society says it's wrong when it isn't. Think about it. If we destigmatize the idea of women having multiple partners, there won't be an issue of unmarried men. If both genders participate in polygamy at roughly equal rates, so there won't be elevated rates of crime from unmarried men. Now, class discrimination is where it gets tricky. However, you know something? Two of the arguments 
faithfulness and slightly age are caused by class discrimination. So how can we slice at the root of these two arguments? Well, first, we need to understand what is fundamentally wrong with a rich person getting more wives. We know it's wrong, but we can't voice how it is wrong. We just think of this image of a rich old man who is corrupt, perverted, perverted, does drugs and is obese, because that's how Hollywood portrays them. That's bias. We need to get rid of those labels, because even if they are the villain, we need to make that decision with a clear mind. So which of these labels are actually fair and true for most cases? I would say two, old and rich. Why is being old unfair? Simple answer, it's not. To be honest, I personally think that no matter what age difference a couple, as long as they are both over 18 and actually love each other, it's fine. So why is being rich unfair then? Well, giving priority to rich people for more wives is wrong because how wealthy you are is not something you can change easily. If you are born poor, you are, if you are poor, you are likely going to be trapped in a cycle of poverty unless you do something drastic. Vice versa, if you are born into wealth, because it is much easier to stay that way. That is what is wrong with giving rich people an advantage. It is deciding their future on what they are born with to some degree. How do we remedy this unfairness? Well, we can restrict the maximum number of wives and husbands to be four. This would mean that a few rich men or women couldn't take all the wives or husbands. And yes, there would still be an advantage to rich men. And that is a weakness of polygamy. But look, there is always a bias to the rich. Men and women prioritize whoever is better, more fit, more rich, more handsome. It always exists. But you need to know that relationships aren't just based on this. You can work hard to be more attractive by being fit, more knowledgeable, to connect more to other people. I also want to say that this effect of only the rich having wives is much smaller than you imagine. Because even in societies which allow polygamy, not that many people actually do so. Because the aim of allowing polygamy isn't so that everyone has multiple partners. Just the small percentage of those who want it can do so. Because polygamy isn't for everyone and it doesn't have to be. Now we shift to the argument about resources and how more partners mean less for each individual wife or partner. And this is correct. But as long as you actually do love all your partners in the relationship, why can't you be faithful to multiple women and or husbands at the same time? And I get if you have more than a dozen wives or husbands, because you literally would not have the time to interact with each of them on a daily basis and to maintain a relationship. Which is where my suggestion of a maximum of four partners for each person applies. Four partners would mean that you would have enough time to talk to and interact with each of your partners. So last of all, health as in having a smaller gene pool because all your genes would come from one man or one woman. This is not that great of an argument because the husband and wife are unrelated. So the gene pool is still pretty wide. Also, the effect isn't as large as you might think because only a small percentage of the population would participate in polygamy. Furthermore, all the genes coming from a single man is an exaggeration as if you have if you were to have a maximum of four partners for one person there would still be a lot of partners and a wide gene pool thus recessive disorders would have a much lower chance of happening than you think and even if 
damage to the gene pool was still a concern. You could just have a single child, adopt children, undergo IVF treatment, or not have a child altogether, while still having multiple partners. So revisiting that original question, why is polygamy okay? This is because we can put a series of restrictions on polygamy to make it fair for society as a whole. These restrictions would be, number one, both men and women being allowed to participate in polygamy, but also changing the stigma around women having multiple husbands. Number two, having a maximum of four wives per person. And number three, making respect an actual love to be the center of each relationship. And that is why I think polygamy is okay. Now, as a concluding note, I just want to give you a little context on polygamy. Part three, context. You see, the Western perception that harms are wrong is only very recent, corresponding to the rise of religions such as Christianity in the past few thousand years. In fact, humans were pretty much polygamous throughout all of their 7 million years of existence. We are not programmed to be monogamous. From an evolutionary pr perspective, the goal as a living being is to reproduce, to have the most amount of mates and offspring, so it would not be conducive to be monogamous. What I think that it comes down to is this knee-jerk reaction. Polygamy is a taboo in our society. We are all taught to think it is wrong without knowing why. It's just wrong. That's it. No discussion. So what is the lesson here? Look, even if you don't agree with me, that's completely fine. But what I'm trying to get across is this. Even if we think we know something is blatantly wrong, I encourage you just to stop and think for a second. Think if you can really justify it in a reason, reasoned, logical arguments. Because snap, knee-jerk, reactions aren't what we need to constantly evolve and become better every day. To finish off, you may have noticed that I spend quite a long time trying to look at arguments against polygamy. And I did that on purpose because I want you guys to be able to see both sides of the argument to the fullest. Also, a really big inspiration for this video was Jim Sterling, and you may have heard of him. His entire branding rides on the fact that he is extremely honest with his opinion, and I admire that. And he made an episode, Jim Sterling made an episode talking about polygamy and how he himself was a polyamorous man. And at first, I was really judgmental. And I thought it was just wrong because it was something so foreign to me. And I had uh, thought so my entire life. So I made this video to try and understand polygamy on a deeper level. So thank you very much, Jim Sterling. Thank you, everyone. This was probably the hardest video for me to make ever. Not just because, not, not because of the editing, because I haven't done that yet, but because I really didn't know enough about the topic. And I couldn't rely purely on my personal opinion. So I had to do a lot of research to inform myself, to draft and redraft to structure my piece and rewrite it for, for it to make sense, but also to be entertaining and concise. Just writing the script for this video took four days trying to argue, rationalize, and balance so many different ideas. And for that, this was an amazingly difficult script. Now, thank you very much for staying and apologies for not uploading sooner. You guys are my lifeblood and hopefully you've learned something new or I've opened up your perspective just that little bit more. Because this is what this channel lives for. Thank you very much. Soaring Stallion, out.